For more on the Kings, we welcome in ESPN 1320's Damian Barling of the D'Lo and Casey Show. Damian, thanks for joining. And look, I'm not going to play no games. We're just going to get straight to the good stuff. The Kings made it official. Tristan Thompson is coming to Sacramento. And I know fans, they're worried about the Kardashian curse. Let's be real, though, it's been bad for the Kings for some years now. Either way, I got to ask will Tristan be a distraction? No, I'm not even 100%. Confident Tristan's going to be a king. Like, I still think there's something out there for Monty McNair to do. And Tristan Thompson at $9 million, it's certainly an attractable contract, you know, with it being off the books next year. And I don't have a problem with Tristan Thompson being on the roster, especially with Alex Lynn here, Rashawn Holmes getting re signed. I think the Sacramento Kings, in a, in, a, in a complete opposite of what they were last year, I think they're in a pretty good spot when it comes to the big man. So if Tristan Thompson is here, I, I, I think he's going to have a certain role, but I'm still leaning towards maybe Monty making another move that involves that $9 million Tristan is owed. But as far as the whole Kardashian curse and the drama going around that, do you, do you think that will be a thing or are you just like not even playing into that? Bro, this team has missed the playoffs for 15 years. What, what's it even matter at this point if we have a Kardashian curse to tack on to everything else? Hey, maybe that will be what breaks the curse. You never know. Maybe. California maybe. Classic just wrapped up. What are your thoughts on what Davion Mitchell was able to show in the few games? He was a natural man. He looked at he, he he looked like it took him a few minutes to get into the flow offensively. This was the thing that stood out to me the most. And and it's understandable. Like you watch that highlight there. He's he's kind of coming up the floor. He's looking for his teammates. He's getting into a flow, finds his guy there, but he knew his spot defensively immediately. Like he looked like he was born to play defense. He had didn't ease into anything on the defensive end. He just like attacked it. Um, so I was really happy. I know his second game wasn't you know particularly pretty, uh, but I really enjoyed what I saw from Davion Mitchell and everything that we had heard about him headed into the or coming out of the draft. I should say it all showed itself at one time or another at the California Classic. Right. We knew that he was a good defensive player. We're going to see that. But as much as he's been attacking, he's proved to be. And that was another thing. They said like he was going to attack it. And we saw absolutely that. From the guys that you just saw on the court, what player surprised you the most in the California Classic? Emmanuel Terry did. Uh, there was actually a couple of guys. Matt Coleman, I thought, was really impressive, particularly the first half of the first game. I really enjoyed him. Um, but Emmanuel was fun, man. He, he's, a, he's a big dude. He's like 6'9". Um, he gets up and down the floor like he was he was super aggressive. He was physical. Uh, I really enjoyed watching him. Now I know he's been in the league. He's kind of a G League guy. He might make the uh, you know Stockton Kings roster or another G League roster. But he's a guy who I like. I, I'd like to see him stick around a little bit, even if it is in Stockton. I thought he was pretty impressive. Sort of like plays like Rashawn Holmes made some great defensive yeah. plays. With the adjustments and, and player moves that you've seen out of Monte McNair this offseason, will the Kings make the playoffs next year? I know it's a loaded question, but. No, it is. But, you know, that's kind of been Kenny and I's conversation, you know, since the regular season ended is, yeah, they're, they're, they are going to make the playoffs next year. And I'm Let's not going to say, you know, otherwise, they have to make the playoffs next year. This isn't a choice anymore for Monte McNair and Luke Walton. Like, you have to make the playoffs. And I thought Monty did a heck of a job following the season in his postseason press conference in which he was saying, yeah, that's, that's the expectation. We know what's out there. There's, there's, there's no easing into this. There's no getting a feel for it. We are going to make the moves uh, that get this team to the postseason. We're going to make the decisions that get this team to the postseason. The first one was retaining Luke Walton. He thought that was going to be the, uh, the move to get it done. And now we're starting to see the second and third parts of it. Obviously, the draft is now behind us free agency I don't want to say it's behind us but it's underway there's just right. the question is what's the next thing to happen is it buddy or is it is it Marvin are they both here are they not here what's next you know who I'm happy to see is staying Rashawn Holmes absolutely I, I was so happy to see that well Damien thanks for coming on and everybody make sure that you turn on your radios to ESPN 1320 Monday through Friday from noon to four to hear more from this cat right here because he's a true treat that's why we have him on almost every week. Oh, stop. Thanks, Sarah. We appreciate you. Likewise.